God. Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We are going to start in a few minutes. We just want to give a little bit of time for people to trickle in. You are joining the Government Contracting 101. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> We're very excited. As the um, we posted in the chat, today's webinar will be recorded. We will be sending the recording as long as uh, with the PowerPoint presentation via email. Please provide us with at least three business days as we have to receive the recording first and we will be sharing that your way. So all the, the slides that you will be seeing today, you'll also gonna be receiving them by email. My name is Lorna Baez, I'm the Assistant Director at the Small Business Development Center at Florida International University. If you are here, um, it's because you understand the enormous financial opportunities for small businesses to do a business with the US government, the largest customer in the world. So this is gonna be a Government Contracting 101 webinar this week and this month, SBDC at FIU is also hosting other um, workshops. Government contracting is a world of information. So this one, this webinar is a bit of an introduction. And then we're going to have other webinars that will also um, focus on different areas. If you're interested in research, the grants of the SBIR and the SDTR, that's a webinar that is happening tomorrow. And then we have other workshops at the Center for Black Innovation here in Overtown, Miami, um, as well as another one in Westchester Library, and that's gonna be in Spanish. Um, and I wanna introduce Matt Block, one of our incredible government contracting consultants. The last thing that I'm going to say before I leave it to him is that if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please use the Q&A section and then um, we will be answering it um, after at the end of the webinar unless you know we can do some pauses throughout. Okay, so enjoy. Matt. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, before we start, I just want to apologize in advance to everyone. Uh, you can't plan for these things, but I'm a little under the weather today. Um, doing my best. I'm usually a little more cheery than I am right now. Uh, if you see me stop to take breaks for water, I'm just trying to catch my breath. So uh, please bear with me with that. Um, and uh, before we go on, also, before I introduce myself, I do want to let everyone know that um, I love answering questions. I love answering everyone's questions, but you know, it's more productive if you keep your question in the Q&A uh, specific to the slide that we're on. I understand that many people have a lot of questions about many, many subjects, but this is a government contracting 101 class. Um, and I'll try to answer like all general questions towards the end, but if you really need an answer on one of the slides, please uh, uh, put it in the questions and answer and Lorna and Leonardo are gonna do their best to catch that question so you can stop me and um, try to answer that question for you on that slide, okay? We have an hour, so I'm gonna be moving uh, pretty quickly through the slides. So, you know, try to put those questions in the Q&A as, you know, as quickly as you can, okay? Uh, Lorna, Leonardo, feel free to interrupt me whenever you have to when you see one of those questions. All right, so hi everybody. My name is uh, Matt Block. I've been with the center. I think uh, I'm going on four years already by now. Uh, before that, I used to work for uh, DBE Supportive Services, helping small businesses engage with the Department of Transportation. Um, I have a lot of experience helping, you know, start up businesses, uh, working with government. Um, I am very, very thankful for SPDC for having me on board, and uh, I hope I can assist you all personally one-on-one -on -one in the future. Uh, before we go on, uh, let's talk about the SPDC network. As you can see, it is a network all across Florida, and this goes all across all other states, all right? Um, for us right here, we're at the center of the FIU here in South Florida and Monroe County. Um, 
what do we do? So we go one-on-one -on -one business consulting. Now, before you, you have, you do have to register for service. Uh, that will be, all the information will be on these slides at the end. And as Lorna said, you'll be getting them. Uh, we offer startup assistance, access to capital financial management. I know that's always a big one. International trade and development, marketing and growth strategies. And where I work for um, this section is government contracting. Okay. We offer information, data market research, and training and workshops. Okay, and the most important thing, all this is at no cost to small businesses. Okay, you will never, ever, ever get a bill from us. If you ever get a bill from me, that's my evil twin brother. Just feel free to ignore him. He does bad things. All right, PTAC or APIS. I get this question a lot nowadays because PTAC changed their name to APIS Accelerators. If you hear about PTAC and APIS Accelerators, they're one and the same. Um, a lot of people ask me if I'm PTAC uh, or APIS Accelerators. I, I am not them in name. Uh, but I perform the same functions as PTAC. And in fact, uh, our PTAC consultant and I uh, work a lot together in a lot of projects. So if any of you get assigned to me, uh, feel the same as you're working with an APEX Accelerator consultant. Okay. So what does APEX offer? Government contracting services are offered by the Florida APEX, that's formerly known as PTAC. PTAC stood for Procurement Technical Assistance Center. All right. Uh, the APEX Accelerator is funded in part through the cooperative agreement with the Department of Defense. Uh, this agreement was made to be able to help businesses um, uh, be able to surf through all the information in the government, which is a huge ocean, okay? The focus is consulting, training, and information to help businesses, small or large, research and bid on government contracts from the Department of Defense, other federal, state, and local agencies. Now, this is very important. It's not only for federal contracting. It is also for state and local agencies. And, um, and people often ask me, like, is federal better than state or, or, or county? It really doesn't matter. Money is money. Whatever is easier for you to get the door open, that's where you want to focus. Um, but, you know, PTEC does not only, I mean, sorry, APEX does not only offer uh, federal uh, contracting assistance, also local. Okay. So please keep that in mind. Florida SPDC, by the numbers, since 2014 through 22, our team has provided the following client outcomes. And uh, let me go to my favorite one here. Check out this one 221.6 million in government contracts secured. So, and it's going to be higher this year. It's going to come up a little higher. So this is um, our numbers that we've done to help small businesses. And um, this is our consulting team from Miami-Dade. All right. Um, here's this uh, charming fellow down here. Uh, and uh, all these consultants are offer, some of them offer government contracting, other offers uh, access to capital, marketing, business planning. Uh, please check our website for more information on these consultants. If you're in, um, for BizGap, we got our team of consultants as well. And if you're operating in the Florida Keys, we have dedicated consultants for the Florida Keys as well. So you're all set in, Miami, in uh, Miami-Dade County and Monroe County for assistance. And uh, very importantly, uh, we were, the, our center was named the, the center of the year last year, okay? Uh, which means that we, it, we got all the best goals in the country for all the entire SPDCs across all the states. So uh, we do have a very big pride in that recognition. Now, learning objectives. Uh, this workshop is for all entrepreneurs who want to learn how they can grow their business through federal government contracts. We're not going to be touching on, on local, but remember, we do assist with that too, okay? We're going to review the six-step gateway to successful contracting, provide examples of finding and securing federal contracting opportunities, which everybody wants to know that, uh, provide tips on business development and networking, and share additional resources to help your business identify and secure government contracts. All right, so what do we need to know about federal government contracting? All right, There's, this, this is a six-step gateway we've put together about how, and this is based on our experience on how we've helped businesses, you know, from inception to the, to the end to start working with government contracting. We found that these are the best steps to do it. One is evaluate. Is government contracting even the right path for your business? And we'll talk about this, but this is one of the things I like to, I like to uh, um, <clears throat> touch on a lot because sometimes it's just the fact of depending on your product or service, Government contracting might not be the best path at the minute, okay? After we've determined this, plan. Develop your plan for entering into government market space. Register, all right? This is what I help with a lot on a daily basis. Complete the required uh, business registrations, which are SAM for the federal government. For the state of Florida, just in case you want to take notes, you got My Florida Marketplace. And for the county, you got Miami-Dade County Strategic Procurement. Also remember that each city is also a market. So you can sign up with the city of Doral, you can sign up with the city of Hialeah, Coral Gables, so on, okay? 
um, prepare, develop marketing tools and secure certification. This is another thing I help with a lot. For example, the 8A, HubZone, WOSB, these are all federal certifications. If you've heard of like, you know, MBE, you know, FBE, those are other certifications in other areas. For example, MBE would be a state certification. FBE is a, a, a county certif certification. And please remember that all these, you know, federal certifications are federal certifications. State certifications are state certifications. Uh, these don't piggyback off each other. You know, they're each for, you know, each level of government. Pursue, which is find, select, and pursue government opportunities and achieve, which is, you know, always the one we want to get to. All right, so let's go for evaluation. All right, first you gotta ask yourself, is government contracting the right path for your business? All right, this is probably the main reason. The reason is because business to government can be very expensive and there's strong competition depending on the product or service, all right? What do I mean by can be expensive? One thing that my clients when they first start up always ask me is, uh, Matt, does the government give a, 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 an advance on a contract so it, so it can perform? The answer is no, absolutely not. Uh, the government does not give advances. Uh, every single uh, uh, government contract when it starts has to be done uh, for the first month has to be done out of pocket the government what they do is they do a progress payment so what if your contract's like a year you know a, a year of performance they're going to pay you every month according to what you've done in that month so what i like to tell my clients is prepare for potentially 60 days without getting paid and in those 16 days you got to pay employees you got to pay uh, uh, uh you know materials equipment whatever overhead whatever it is you're paying before you start getting paid by the government they're very good on paying. They're not going to like, you know, you know, skip town on you. They're the government. They got nowhere to go. Um, but please keep in mind that, you know, they don't give advances for projects. Okay. Um, before we get started, let's cover some key questions you need to ask yourself before you start with government contracts. Okay. First of all, what size contract can you handle? This is a very, very good question you want to ask yourself. And I'd like to give you a, 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 a good um, personal note on this. Uh, when I used to work for a company a long time ago, we were getting like fifty, sixty thousand dollar contracts. You know, and one or two people can handle those. One day we picked up a million dollar contract, and I noticed our office grew by like fifteen people, and we needed like twelve, thirteen people just to manage the contract. That's aside from the work we were doing in the field. Just the managing of the contract for a million dollars, like twelve people. All right, <laughs> all on salaries and everything. So. I know small businesses are like, yeah, I want a million dollar contract. I'm like, yeah, but do you have the infrastructure to handle something like that? So, you know, please keep that in mind. And it depends from work to work, like what you're doing, but, you know, keep that in mind. Like, can you handle a contract? And I know small business owners are like very enthusiastic and they work hard and they're hungry. Uh, and, you know, you're like, I don't mind. I'll, I'll stay awake 20 hours a day. To, I, I get that. But um, in the end, you're only one person. So, you know, please keep that in mind when you do, especially when it comes to human resources. How many proposals can now this I gotta change this someday? How many projects can you really handle at the same time? Right? So, you know, everyone wants to just, you know, pile on the work, but you know, one thing you gotta see is when you fail on a government contract, that usually spell that usually unless you have a lot of capital, that usually spells the end for a small company. So uh one big problem with companies is they when once they start opening the door and getting in there, they start overbidding themselves, just getting into too many projects, and it comes to a point where they can't handle them. So please keep that in mind. You do not want to fail on a government contract. How much growth are you willing to go through and can you handle? This is another one. I got, you know, clients that would like to hire people. I got clients that say, you know, I don't ever want to hire anybody, ever. Like, I, I want to work all by myself. So if you're not willing to, like, grow like that because that's your business model, then you got to take that into consideration. Um, which is, you know, this down here. How many employees can you add and are you willing to add? All right? Now, uh, just side note, do keep in mind that, you know, this can be a matter of opinion sometimes, but... You know, if you looked at after the pandemic, um, all the big employers have been fighting for for good employees. You know, there's a reason for that. It's because people are the ones that make money for companies, you know. And I get that, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, the less people I have, the less I have to pay. Yeah, but also the less people you have, the less you can handle. So please keep that in mind. People are what make companies good. I mean, that's at least in my opinion, that's the way it is. Um, okay, so evaluate. What if you win a contract? All right. Everyone's like, yay. Sometimes when you win a contract, uh, you got to keep in mind also that, you know, if your bidding practices were not good enough and you didn't go over everything or we're going to talk about this in a second or you start using other people's prices without checking into them. There's a chance you might not have a happy face when you win a contract because you'll find out that, you know, the bidder that came in, you know, second is, like, you know, 
20, 30% off and you notice you lost money before even walking into the contract. So that's something we got to talk about. Uh, what if you lose a contract? Losing uh, a bid is com a, a bid, not a contract. Uh, losing a bid is completely like the norm in government contracting. The, the Actually, the numbers, uh, national numbers are 10 to 1. So you bid 10 times to win one bid. And uh, I can't tell you how many clients I've had in the past that, you know, they work really hard on a proposal or a bid. And they lose it and they're like, no, that's it. I'm not doing government contracting anymore because I lost this bid. And, you know, I put so much work into it and I lost it. And, you know, it, it, it takes some time to convince them, you know, hey, you know, this is the way it is. You know, the way you're going to win contracts by consistently bidding and putting more bids out. And, yeah, it's a lot of work. And you got to see whether you want to put in that work because it's very, very rare. At least in my case, it's never happened where somebody bids on a project the first time and they win it. I've never seen I'm sure it has, but I've never seen it happen. Um, what is the right opportunity which you can afford to win or lose without derailing your company? That's another thing, right? If you have, if your company has good private contracts, do you really want to put those contracts that are bringing in money on hold to start working on bids that you might not win? You might want to take that into consideration. Can you walk away even up to the proposal due date? Yeah, you can. Absolutely. Uh, what you don't want to do is win a project and then walk away. Um, what does winning this contract build? So, what is so an evaluation right so what is your niche target market all right first you got you know past performance do you have any past performance and you know sometimes if you don't have past performance in the government that's fine if you have any past performance in your uh area in your areas of expertise for work um in the private sector that will count towards you know past performance past experiences geographical focus area socioeconomic status small business size standard, and what do you know about your market? This is very important. You know, you're the experts in what you do, so it's very important you understand um, how your market is and, you know, how currently it's working within the government. Uh, bottom line is don't think about government contracts as, as what they will get you. Think about what they will cost you, all right? Again, if, you're, if your business is doing really well in the private market right now, you don't want to sacrifice those private contracts to go after government contracts if you don't have enough people to handle them at the moment. Okay, you want to keep that money, keep coming in. Everybody's got to pay their bills. All right. So plan. The reality is that most successful firms in government contract do not get a NASA or DOD contract right out of the gate. That's the reality. Uh, most of the time it takes a long time. You got to go local before you go federal. It, it, it takes a while. They follow the tried and true path of start small. Just keep that in mind. Start local. That's another one. I have a lot of clients that are bidding in, on like janitorial projects and in Hawaii, and I'm like, why would you even try that? Like a, a local firm there is gonna like beat you up on the price because they're local. It's easier for them to move everything around. You know, stay local, build past performance. Remember again, whether they're public or private. All right, take advantage of teaming or subcontracting. We'll speak about this. All right, grow your capacity if possible, financial, HR, operations. Remember, there's a lot of also like technology now that can help with this. All right, QuickBooks is a great one, for example. Um, and then little by little, work your way up to the larger contract. Hey, I see Luis is here. Awesome. Um, so registering with the federal government. Um, so to register with the federal government as a vendor, this is very important. Um, I, I know a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, register the business with the state, like some sun business. They're like, oh, I'm registered. And like, yes, you're registered as a business. All right. But to register as a vendor with the federal government, you have to go through SAM. All right. SAM is the system for award management. And again, this is this changed a couple of years before. So anybody like um, still using their DUNS number, please know that DUNS isn't used anymore. This is a two-step process. The first thing you're going to do is log in and obtain a unique entity ID. Once Sam gets back with you, where you UEI, then you're going to finish the registration. All right. Um, now, just so you know, like for this registration, it's pretty lengthy and it can be a little complicated. That's what we come in to help you. Um, but please, whenever you're doing this, I always tell everybody like, you know, Set aside like two hours of your time to sit down and do the registration where nobody is bothering you. So you can just get it done in one shot. All right. Um, please keep in mind that Sam, you know, might get back to you with questions about your registration. Um, just handle them as they come in. Hopefully you got your registered with our center and we can help you through the process. All right. If you have completed your contract and have a cage code, this does not mean you are registered as a vendor for the state, counties, or cities. This is very important. So if you're registered with Sam, you're registered to work with the federal government. All right. This doesn't mean you're registered to work for the state of Florida. Now, you can work on federal contracts within Florida, like think a federal courthouse, for example. But if it's a state 
uh, project, like road project or stuff like that, you are not registered for that. You have to register with the state of Florida. And if you want to take notes, that's through my Florida market. All right. Same thing with the counties. If you want to work with Miami, you know, Miami-Dade County and you see like the Miami-Dade County logo, your SAM registration is not good for that. You're going to have to register if you want to take notes for Miami-Dade strategic procurement. All right. Now, everyone, uh, if you forget a lot of things that I say now, that's okay. You can forget my name if you want. <laughs> we'll talk about that later, but please keep this in mind. All registrations and government certifications are free. Do not let anyone bamboozle you into thinking that these cost money. There are companies, third party uh, companies that are very good at helping you with this, but it's an option. You don't have to uh, uh, pay anybody to get registrations or certifications, all right? Um, but we, at the center, we can't do it for you. We can help you through the process so you can do it um, on your own and you don't have to pay any, any money to get this done. Um, remember that if someone is trying to charge you, rest assured that they are not the government. Please keep that in mind, all right? Um, and I got no, personally, I have no problem with that. I just don't like when they make people believe that, that they're the government when they're not. Other than that, it's okay. Um, SPDC and APIS consultants can help you with registration information. Take advantage of these no-cost services. Now, again, we can't do the, the process for you. And even if we did, we have to get all the information from you. So our job is to give you all the information you need and answer any questions you have during the registrations or certification process. Uh, Lauren, I see someone has their hand up. Um, Leo? Leo? No, no, I think- No, no my, my hand had just raised because I tried to see who who raised, but uh, it wasn't raised. I see Julia Montenegro. Um, Julia, you can use the Q&A. All right. Or maybe she was giving you a, a high five, Matt. <laughs> you know it. She's like, great presentation, Matt, high five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, Julia just put um we we can respond to you in the chat. Okay, awesome. I know Luis is here, so you can answer a lot of those questions. All right, so registering for small business certifications. There are multiple federal government programs to help with small business win at least 23% of all federal contracting each year. Okay. So these are all um the small business uh programs there are. As you see, there's small business, women-owned small business, small disadvantaged business, service disabled veteran, veteran. Small business and hub zone, all these are goals that the company, that the federal government is trying to reach in giving contracts out to small businesses. However, and I'm sure it's going to be touched on in the presentation, please keep in mind that, you know, even if you are a woman, you need to certify as a woman owned small business before um, get, you know, be able to have access to these programs. We can help you with that as well. But please keep in mind that if you're a service disabled veteran, even if you have all the paperwork stating that you're a service disabled veteran, you still have to certify with the SBA to get your certification. Okay, so what do we have? We got small disadvantaged uh, business. These are self-certifications on SAM. In other words, on SAM, it's gonna ask you, are you a small disadvantaged business? You're gonna mark yes. And uh, if you're thinking like, you know, even though I can lie about this, uh, at the time of doing your, your, your uh, bid, they're gonna figure out, they're gonna ask you questions to see if you are indeed a uh, small disadvantaged business. So, you know, no way to get away with that. Women owned small business, for that you gotta apply on the SBA WSB website. Economically disadvantaged women on small business, which basically means you're a woman on small business that is economically disadvantaged, um, um, either by race, gender, or by amount of money. And you're going to have to prove all that information on, uh, on the WSB website. Veteran on small business, you can apply that on the Bert Set website. Um, it's actually SBA now. Um, but don't worry, we'll get you all that information. Uh, service disabled veteran on small business, this is a large chunk of our clients come from here. Um, and this is always one that I get asked about a lot, the 8A Business Development Program. Uh, in my personal opinion, it's a great, great, great program. However, you do want to talk to uh, a consultant before you start applying for this because the certification process is very, very long and there's a very high chance you're gonna get turned down if you don't meet the requirements. Um, and you know the requirements are very stiff. Um, and, and I believe a lot of my colleagues will uh, agree with me that we have never seen one of these go through on the first try. Uh, they usually come back with a lot of questions and there's no guarantee you're going to get certified. So please, if, you know, I, I get that we get a lot of information on the web, on YouTube and stuff like that. And I was watching one of the YouTubers saying, oh, you know, just go for your 8A. And, you know, and, you know, and one thing you got to see is that, you know, a lot of them are on YouTube because they're trying to get clicks. It's not because they're like, you know, interested in helping your business. Some of them might be, some of them might not. 
Uh, but there's a lot more to 8A than just apply for it. Um, so, you know, please, you know, before you decide to put in the work for this, because I see people put in months of work for the 8A certification and all of a sudden it's like they get denied. And that's when they come to us and we're like, yeah, well, this is why you got denied. So um, please Matt, uh, talk to us before that. Yes, I'm here. Uh, well, one good question from Flavio Lang. Uh, yeah. What is uh, an 8A? What is an 8A certification? I mean, 8A certification is for uh, uh, minority and disadvantaged businesses, and it's a program basically that puts work aside, like there's a pool of jobs just for 8A um, contractors. It also makes you more appealing as a subcontractor to larger contractors who are trying to bring 8A firms into the project. So it's basically a certification that, you know, helps you get work with the government. But, you know, again, this is my personal opinion. It, it's a, kind of like a middle of the road when you already have some experience working with government. Um, uh, to get that type of certification. And it's really good certification. I mean, I've seen companies do very well with it, but I don't think it's a great uh, start off point for companies that are just starting. All right. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah. And Matt, um, I was going to also note, as you can see from your slide, there's a number of certifications that are available. Mm -hmm. Not every agency is prioritizing an 8A certification. Yep. So you definitely want to talk to consultants like Matt, like Lewis, and do your research. Because we had, for example, the 8A program is a business development program. It's time limited. So you have like eight years to do it. As Matt mentioned, it is a little more stringent to get apl to apply and get, get it successfully. Yep. That you will have to apply. Maybe you get declined. You have to provide more information. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> for the 8A, we had a client that was based in Coral Gables that did medical supplies. And she wanted to get a contract with USAID. Mm -hmm. She was in the process of starting her 8A. She met with a consultant, as it happens, Louis Batista, and Louis said, actually, USAID, they're buying more from the economically disadvantaged woman-owned small business yep. that's listed up there. That's one that you can self-certify, or it's a little bit easier to get the certification than it is for you to do all the work on the 8A. That's correct. So she was able to get the economically disadvantaged woman-owned small business. She got the certification. It was easy. And she was able to get a $2 million USAID, USAID contract. So it shows you like work smarter, not harder, mm -hmm. where you really want to do your research and talk to folks that know the different agencies because you might be putting your time into a specific certification and it's not really going to get you the business you're looking for. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely correct. And, uh, you know, and even if you like want to get the 8A um, and you want government experience, it might be a better idea to get one of the certifications that gets you work a little faster so you can be able to build that experience and then apply for the 8A later on if you need it. Yeah, because the um, 8A is time limited, so you want to be able to build up to it. And day one, start getting as many contracts as you can to grow your business, grow your team, grow, grow your experience, because you only have a certain amount of time you can participate in the program. Correct. What Brian means by that is uh, the 8A uh, certification, and I'm not sure if it's eight or nine, it only has like, when, once you apply for it, you've got eight or, I forget, it's eight or nine years to be able to use the certification. And I, you know, I got a couple of clients that have had the certification for like seven years, and they don't know this, and they've never used it. And it's like, you know, that's it. After that, you can't renew it. You can't do anything. Um, so, you know, please speak to a consultant, be you know, before you apply for any of these, you know, we'll help you out. We'll tell you exactly what the facts are, you know, and, you know, which one will better. And as, you know, Brian said, you know, we can do research on, on the market that you're going to see what certifications are actually buying. Um, so, you know, please uh, keep that in mind. Thanks so much, Brian. Really appreciate it. Um, now, how to use targeting to identify your first. Start your research by reviewing opportunities by your industry. Uh, this will be a huge number, but defines your market. What basically means is, you know, uh, let's check everything that happened in the past about your, your type of work. All this is done by, you know, codes, night codes, PS, you know, this is a lot to go over, but it's basically each type of work has their own code and the government keeps, you know, the federal government, sorry, keeps data on all the work that has been done in the past with this. So we can help you get that information so you can plan accordingly. Um, this start refining search by unique advantages or niche. Small business set aside, which are basically contracts that are set aside for each type of small business, as we spoke about before. Women on small business set aside, set aside uh, um, you know, service disabled veterans set aside, and so on. Um, your geographic area, past experience, and past performance. Next, look forward, look for forecasts. We'll see that in a minute. We'll give you some links so you can see forecasts or past awards to get a, uh, a smart, uh, an idea on what agencies have spent or are projected to spend. All right. Now, please keep in mind that the market shifts, all right? Um, just because the data from, you know, 
I'll give you a good example. I'm sure the data from 2017, 18, 19 is way different from the data, you know, from 20, 21, 22, because we had a big pandemic in the middle and, you know, spending, you know, spending changed in that time. Okay. So, you know, every time you're looking at these past data, please, you know, look at, you know, what happened in the past. I'm sure in 2008 during the, the, the recession, I'm sure there was a lot of change in what the, in what the government was spending on. So please keep that in mind. All right. Just because, you know, 2020 was a great year to sell masks. It doesn't mean that selling masks now might be the, the best thing to do. You got to look into the, you know, into your market. Okay. Um, targeting, use federal contracting research and go to, you can go to this site, usaspending.gov. Remember, you're going to get this presentation. Uh, search for all federal awards under each and every one of your NAICS codes. This is very important. Uh, underline the your. Uh, if you're looking for every single code, um, I don't know how long it's going to take you to run that research. Be, you know, and I know a lot of companies start out and they say, like, you know, I want to do government contracting. You know, and I ask, like, so what do you want to provide? You're like, well, anything the government's buying right now. And it's like, wow, you know, that's, that's going to be a list from here to the moon. I mean, because they buy everything from, you know, uh, propulsion systems for rocket ships all the way down to pencils. So that's a very tall order. So you definitely want to narrow down this search. It's not you're going to be searching forever. And as I said, you know, the market changes. They might be buying something that, you know, you, you're intending to sell now. And in a year, they don't need that anymore. So please keep that in mind. It, 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 to me, that's the tail wagging the dog. You definitely want to like, you know, center on what your niche is and then sell that to the government. Not look at what the government's buying and then, you know, center towards that. And the other issue with that is, you know, unless you're really, really good at everything, which I don't know anybody who's good at everything, um, it's very hard to win bids against people who like really understand the market because they understand the pricing in the market a lot better than somebody who's just starting. Uh, so please keep that in mind. All right. So these are all links that you're going to be getting with the presentation. All right. But these are all links where you can go and see uh, information of the federal government. If you need help uh, um, navigating these, please, uh, you know, enlist with the center so we can give you one-on-one -on -one consulting and help you navigate these pages. Some of them are pretty big and they're a little complicated. Uh, uh, um, one thing, bid match system, and I don't want to, a lot of bid match basically means that the federal government will like send you emails with your type of NAICS of what jobs are available. Uh, this is my personal opinion because I, I worked getting federal contracts before, not only federal, but local too. Um, you definitely want to not depend on these types of systems, not because they're bad, but because you know, it, either they're human operated or AI operated, and sometimes they're going to miss on a lot of jobs that you could have potentially bid on. You definitely want to go into the SAM or My Florida Marketplace or wherever it is, and you want to search for the jobs yourself because, you know, only you know better than anybody what you're looking for, all right? Feel free to sign up for this, but to be honest, I never really trusted it because I, I, I saw a couple of jobs fly by that, you know, it, it didn't it didn't detect. Um, and I, you know, I was working for somebody else at the time, and I, I couldn't use that as an excuse, so. You know, I really have to go into every day and look for jobs. Now, the good news is once you learn how to uh, navigate these systems, I could go through the federal, federal, state, county, and a couple of cities. I could go through it in like 10 minutes in the morning once I realize how to do it. And we can teach you how to do that as well. All right. Target, uh, look for key agencies, procurement contracts, and upcoming RFP workshops or vendor outreach events. We do these all the time here at the center. Um, and uh, we also give you information on other outreach that are going on. Uh, please keep in mind um, these vendor outreach events. I know that, you know, a lot of business owners always come and tell me, like, I go to these vendor outreach events and I never walk out of there with a contract. It's a waste of time. And I'm like, these places are, th these vendor outreach events are not made for you to go there and gain a contract. They're made for you to go and talk to people and make your company known. Um, as far as I know, they're not out there handing out contracts. So, you know, if, if the more people you know within government or within, you know, uh, uh, um, prime contractors, stuff like that, the better it is. You can make those relationships. So, you know, if you can go to these vendor outreach events as a business owner, it's very, very fruitful for your company, even though you're not walking out with a, you know, with a check. Um, but that's, you know, that, that's basically what it is. You, you know, you need to do this type of networking in order for the company. You can bid on jobs as a, you know, as a, as a, you know, an anonymous person and, you know, they're still going to consider your bid. But, you know, it's just like everything. If they can tie a face or something to the bid when they're opening it, 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 it improves your chances. So please keep that in mind. Uh, who should I target at each agency? This is always a really good question. All right. So 
there's four procurement layers. The first one, as a small business, you want to go is to the Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization. This uh, is the federal uh, 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 name for it. The state will have another name. Basically, just look for every single uh, uh, office that helps small businesses engage with a certain um, agency. Okay, each agency has one. They have people there that are that are um, um, that are at the office to help with this. Okay, to help small businesses contact people. After that, you got uh, contracting officers, which they call either COs or KOs, depending on what it is. They're both the same. Sorry, program managers and procurement center representatives. These are all people you can contact, but your first step is the Office of Small Disadvantaged Business Utilization. Each federal agency has a small business office to ensure agencies follow small business contracting rules and regulations. Please keep in mind that they are not buyers, okay? So no matter how much you talk to them, they cannot offer you a contract. All they can do is serve as a liaison between you and the KO, all right, or other agents. But they should be your first stop at the agents because they can tell you who to call. They can tell you how they work. They can tell you they can give you so much information. Remember, they're hired there to help small businesses, to facilitate small businesses to work with the agency. Um, so you should be prepared when you meet with, a, with, a, with an agent, all right? First, do your research. Have three sources, thought opportunities in hand. We'll talk about this. Complete your – this is very important. Before you talk to anyone, uh, make sure you're, you're completely ready because – that's a good way to start a conversation and end it really quickly. Like, you know, hey, you know, I want to, you know, provide, you know, pencils for you. Okay, you registered in Sam. No, I'm not. Okay, so come back later when you're registered in Sam. That's a good way to break a conversation. So please talk to us before you, um, be before you talk to anyone to make sure we have everything for you. Okay. Uh, so COs and KOs, these are offices that make the buying decisions. So these are the people that everyone wants to talk to, but please keep in mind they are very, very, very busy. And, you know, as much as we want to, they don't have time to set up a meeting and talk to you, like, you know, at our convenience. It doesn't work that way. Best way to do it is go through the small business um, office and then, you know, work your way towards getting this. Um, please keep in mind that CLs and KOs are established in the federal acquisition regulation. This might get a little confusing, which is the FAR, which are basically the rules of contracting. A good example is I, you know, I got a lot of uh, uh, clients that, well, I want to go in there and I want to subcontract 100% of the contract out. And so I open up the FAR, which is the Federal Acquisition Regulation on the contract, and it says, well, this contract will only allow 50% subcontracting. And then, and then my clients say, well, can I talk with them about you know, doing that? And I'm like, you can, but as you can see, they live by the FAR. So more than likely, you're going to send them an email saying, like, can I subcontract 100%? You're going to back an email saying, please read FAR, you know, 52 point whatever. And the answer, which translates to no, you can't do that. So please keep in mind that they live by it, all right? You should research the different types of contracting methods each KO uses. Con contracting officers, uh, so how do we do it? Ask the, the small business representative for an email introduction or referral. Ask the, the contract officer for a capability briefing and schedule monthly marketing outreach to them. One thing I do want to tell everybody, when you're going to schedule a monthly marketing, um, it's up to you, but... Try not to use automated systems, you know, like constant contact or stuff like that, because it, 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 those are just too easy to ignore. All right. Make it personal. Put an effort into it. You'll probably have more uh, uh, success that way. I know automated is always easier, but, you know, if it doesn't look personal enough, it's something that a lot of, you know, it just don't, you know, it's something it, it, it's just easier to surf over it if it looks like a robot. So please keep that in mind. Uh, program staff, program managers are, are, have agency knowledge. Their ability, they have the ability to solve any type of problem within the bidding or the job process. And they offer value to the solution you're offering to the agency. So, you know, if you have a new solution or something, these are the people you want to talk to definitely. But remember, you got to change small business offices, CEOs, program managers. All right. And then you got the end users where there are sources of information for you, resources for you to understand how things are currently done and valuable to you in understanding how your solution will benefit them, if it will at all. OK, um, now the procurement center representatives are very important parts of the federal procurement process. They're, they're the ones who review acquisitions, bundling cases and solicitation. They're the ones that before the set aside or even on SAM, they're the ones who recommend the set aside according to their needs. Uh, they perform the market research. So the government also has to do market research, just like the businesses. They perform surveillance reviews and consult others other than small and federal agencies. Oh, and Matt, I had something on the PCR. 
Yeah. Um, so I was going to mention, like the slide says, there's one PCR that's based here in Florida, Procurement mm -hmm. Center Representative. They're under the Small Business Administration, but they cover particular agencies, particular federal agencies and military installations and like NASA and things like that. Um, an example is how you can use them. Uh, Naval Air Station Key West, NAS Key West is under the Air Force. Um, there's a lot of work that goes on down there. They're actually always looking for local small businesses and businesses with certification that's based in the Keys. So there was a contracting officer there. So I reached out to the PCR and said, hey, I think this guy left that was a contracting officer. Do you have a new contact? And that PCR was able to give me the contact for that contracting officer so that we can contact them because we do a lot of work, not just in Miami, but also in the Keys. And that guy was really nice to come out and like talk, like you're talking about source of saw, talk about like, hey, we're looking for these type of services. These are the type of business we're looking for. So that's where PCRs can come in handy for you because it's publicly available information and there you can get their information off the SBA website and reach out. So I did want to just note that. And they can do the same thing for uh, Homestead Air Force Base, for Southcom, for Coast Guard, like for NASA, for any of those two. And please notice that Brian is the project is a is our, our director, and he just uh, told everyone that you know sign up at the center so we can help you get in touch with all this uh, information. Yeah, so, definitely. Thanks, I, thanks I so buried much, the Brian. lead. I buried the lead, but yeah, those PCRs <laughs> are helpful. All right, so these are basically uh, uh, small business procurement uh, set aside goals that the agencies have from the Department of Defense, if you can see, prime small disadvantaged businesses. So these are all forecasts of you know out of 100% of the contracts how much they want to give out to. Uh, and, and set aside. So this is very important information for you to like, when you make a decision on what type of certification do you want to, you know, prioritize. Because in the end, you do want them all, you know, in the end, you know, the 8A is the one that you really want to think about because of the time restriction on it. But, you know, this will help you make a decision on that, okay? You got a link right here so you can check it out. Uh, by the way, uh, they all, all uh, agencies are uh, scored on how well they're doing with uh, bringing in small businesses. As you can see, even with a B, uh, their percentage of, of success is 98.34%. So I would say these programs have been very, very good with helping uh, small and disadvantaged businesses um, engage with the government. I'd say they've been really, really, really well. All right, these are more stats than you can see. Uh, this is all data that we can get you in, in more detail uh, once you sign up for consulting. Uh, but you can see like, like Hub Zone's one that a lot of them sign for, and a lot of people don't know, like depending on where the area is, it's probably one of the lowest ones. All right, um, man, this is something that we can make a presentation on someday. This is the FAM page where basically you're looking for uh, contract opportunities. Um, and I hope to be able to help all of you navigate this one day. Uh, but just so you know, if you're going through this page, this is a screenshot, but do me a favor. If you're going through this page, don't write inside the, the search bar anything. Always click advanced search. That'll make it way easier because it'll open a pane for you where you can uh, filter out the jobs a lot easier. All right, if you look at here, it'll show uh, you know opportunities. If you look at the, at the left-hand side, you put batteries and it show you the opportunities that they have. However, it's way easier to work to uh, work with uh, NACE codes and PSD codes. It'll filter out the, the work a lot easier. If you look on the right, those are uh, jobs for the Department of Defense uh, when it comes to batteries, all right? You can click on each one of those uh, jobs and get more results on them. If you look at the top, it's showing uh, one out of 25 out of 426 results. So you got to get really good at narrowing this down because I don't think anyone can go over 426 uh, uh, in a day and make a decision on what they're going to bid on, okay? <clears throat> now, uh, the federal government has an advanced acquisition plan uh, where you can see, like, you know, what they're planning on buying. Uh, please keep in mind that, you know, as, as much information they give you, it's very helpful, but nothing is written in stone. Things can change from one day to the next, Okay. But they try to stick to the plan as much as they can, but everyone knows how a plan is, right? It changes according to like how things change, okay? There's a uh, sample of uh, an advanced acquisition plan. Here's more information on it. All this information you can get, okay? Uh, you can also go to agency forecast, and if you look, this is a Google search, so it's not anything you have to pay for or anything. Uh, it's right here, you can go to the forecast of contracting opportunities. And I know it's a lot of information. That's what I'm saying. Please sign up for consulting so we can guide you through this. These are agency forecasts. And here again is more information on agency forecasts and what they're planning to spend on certain NAICs. 
All right. As noted earlier, it's important that when pursuing government contracts to prepare, 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 and prepare. This also implies the business and development. Call it what you want, networking, outreach, making connections, whatever you want to call it. Uh, whatever your term it is, it, it, hustling to promote your business and get in touch with the right content to get your business contract. That's what's the most important thing. Um, and I, again, I know I see online, it's like, oh, it's so easy to get government contracts. It, it's way easier if you're making contacts and speaking to people rather than just being this anonymous person, you know, sending stuff out online, okay? Um, make all the outreach you can, try to talk to your consultants, try to make all the contacts that you can, all right? As for previous awarded contracts that are similar in scope for service you can provide, all right? This, it's important, it's very good to look at this historical data, but you know, for all you estimators out there, please be careful but the easiest way to estimate is get your competitor's price that they want to contract with and go under that one, all right? Now, please keep in mind that the information provided about the price doesn't tell you whether that contractor who won that bid at that price is currently living in a box under a bridge, okay? Because the price was too low. That's just the price that they bought it for. And, you you know, you got to look at more. And to me, personally, I, I never look at other people's prices because all that does is throw me off over my price. Okay. And again, this is a class for like another whole class on, on, on estimating and bidding. But, you know, sometimes when my clients ask me for like past prices and I give them to them, I feel like a little pang of guilt because I'm like, you know, I'm giving them something that could potentially hurt them if they don't, if they use it incorrectly. All right. Um, always estimate your prices. And personally, I would estimate my prices before looking at a past price because that past price can like plays tricks in your mind because you're like, you know, I got to be at a hundred dollars and you're doing the, the math and it's coming up to 150 and you're like, well, I got to bring it down to a hundred and sometimes you just can. All right. And you got to keep in mind that, you know, these prices that were given they're they were probably very low to begin with. And, you know, think about inflation from 2020 till now, like the prices from 2019 even matter to you anymore. Uh, considering how things, how materials and gas and everything went up. So, you know, please be very, very careful with that, with that ammunition. All right. Uh, if, prop, if possible, take proposal and cost estimating classes or use a software program. Um, another thing with software programs, that just means it makes it easier for you to type in information. But remember, garbage in, garbage out, right? Um, if you're looking for a program where you can take like a, a, an RFP from the government and put it through a machine and get a, a, a proposal out on the other side, that type of software does not exist. You still have to do the work, okay? All software does is make things like, you know easier for you to enter information and keep the information you know, organize so you can bid better, okay? Um, develop contract or RFP matrix. Okay, very good. You can develop a matrix and track forecast contracts, but please keep in mind that every matrix is not going to apply to every single job. They might be similar depending on the type of work you do. Sometimes it'll just be, it won't even be an RFP. It'll be a quote that they're asking you for instead of an RFP. Um, but, you know, please be very careful when you're copying and pasting because sometimes some information is not relevant to other RFPs, all right? Uh, and this is uh, understand RFP scoring committee criteria. Sometimes RFPs are not um, um, limited to price. There's actually like a scoring, like a test. So like, you know, your written response for technical can be like 70% of that and your price can be 15%. So it's very important you understand that before you start writing a proposal. All right, there are three things you'd have ready when you attend vendor outreach events, RFP workshops, or you meet with the uh, agencies that we were speaking with before, all right? Number one is your capability statement. Please keep that in mind. Um, uh, this is something they're always going to ask you for, whether you're meeting with somebody or, you know, uh, trying to bid on a contract. They ask you for that a lot. If you don't have a capability statement, you don't know what it is, please sign up for consulting. It will help you uh, help you understand what it is and help you build one. All right. Uh, I help clients with these on the daily. All right. Uh, your elevator pitch. Uh, there's always the, the, the argument about, you know, how long should an elevator pitch be? Um, my personal opinion, 30 seconds. When you do that, make sure that this is always the biggest down, downfall. Make sure you let whoever you're talking to know what you do. What type of service can you do? I can't tell you how many times people came up to me, spoke to me, and they walked, the, you know, they were the best in the world. They can do everything. And, it, and they walked away and like, I don't know what, what I was just offered. I have no idea what type of service, all right? If you're doing custom furniture, tell them we're doing custom furniture. If you're doing, you know, a... Uh, uh, Medical supplies, tell them we deliver medical supplies. Like, don't keep it vague because, you know, if I don't know what you do, I'm not going to pay attention. I might, you know, there's no way to know whether I need what, you, what you're what you offering or not, all right? And always have a business card. And again, this is my personal opinion. 
don't get too creative on the business cards. Just use the normal rectangle business card. I can't tell you how many times they give me those round ones or one shaped like clovers and everything. And I got nowhere to put them because our pockets aren't designed for this. Okay. Um, you know, keep it simple in that case. Just make sure the information is there. All right. Here's additional resources. So the Florida Apex Accelerator. Uh, oh, Florida Apex again. Um, so please keep in mind when you see uh, PTAC and Apex, they're one and the same. PTAC changed their name to Apex. All right, Lorna, you want to take over from here? Yes. First of all, thank you so much. This has been an incredible webinar. Thank you, Matt, for Absolutely. this presentation. And thank you, Luis Batista, who um, was a star uh, answering all of the Q&A questions. So thank you, um, Luis. Um, just so you know, we do have Matt and Luis and Mirtha, government contracting consultants. If you want um, to meet with them, we have shared the link for consulting. Now, I we would love to, we are also sharing the how did we do um, link in the chat. Please take a few minutes. It's a couple of questions. We do value your insights in the webinars and workshops that we provide to you, and we want to hear your uh, answers and also suggestions. Remember that SBDC at FIU is here to support you and your business journey. Um, and if there are no other questions, oh, we do have a couple of questions. Um, let's see. Thanks for the save, Luis. <laughs> You're very welcome. And I did make one note in the, uh, not in the Q&A, but in the chat, and that is that you know, it is a fire hose and it's only, you know, totally unrecognizable because you haven't done it. But once you start doing it, the verbiage becomes easier. There's Ooh. some areas that are easier than others. But one thing is very, very much keep in mind that every single situation is totally different. Yeah. The beginning with, with what your expectations are. Some people want to build a, a million dollar company. Some people want to build a hundred million dollar company. That, that, that starts affecting the approach right there. What industry you're in you know, applies to what certifications would be best for you, what uh, what level of government. So there's a lot to it, you know, but it all starts with what you want. That's completely true. Every situation is completely different. Like, don't, you know, and, and again, that's why I keep on mentioning these online, like, you know, YouTube videos and stuff. And they're like, they make it, everybody think like there's just one straight path tour and there really isn't. Like the, the rules are, are, are set, but it depends on what type of business you're running. Also, as a friendly reminder, tomorrow, um, Brian, would you like to give them a, a brief of your webinar tomorrow? Sure. Um, the the 10 second version is that you guys were talking about federal contracting today and contracting 101. Tomorrow, we're going to um, discuss the Small Business Innovation Research Program and the Small Business, Small Business Technology Transfer Program. Those are basically programs where you can get access to some of the federal government's uh, research dollars that you can use it towards developing innovative um, technology and um, solutions for the federal government. So we would uh, really encourage you to attend. Um, it's a really great program. There's a lot of interest in that program, especially because folks here, it's a grant, um, but there is um, a lot of information and steps that you need to do um, before jumping into it. So we're definitely happy to talk about that. Um, I think we have not as many folks registered as for Matt's webinar because he's Mr. Charming, but um, we still, I think we had maybe 200 people register for that one. So we just encourage you to register for it because um, it's kind of like a part two. If you talk about contracts, you can also talk about these research budgets um, because sometimes depending on the stage of your uh, product or service, you might go the contracting route or maybe if it's an idea that you have that you want to develop, you can also get um, this SBAR grant for it. So there's kind of different ways to go about it. And everybody, I, I strongly recommend you attend, you know, all subjects of business. I strongly recommend that, um, you know, like Lisa and I, we're centered on our government contracting, but I can't tell you how much I've learned from my fellow consultants who do other areas about, you know, business development. And, you know, government contracting is just one piece of the puzzle, all right? And uh, sometimes you need a lot of other pieces of the puzzle to be able to even start in government contracting. So I really, really recommend you you know, you speak to all our colleagues about different subjects and, you know, it, it's easy sometimes like, you know, this interests me and this is where I want to go, but there's in every aspect of business and life, there's stuff that we just don't like, but we still have to do. 
Um, and it's very important towards doing that. So I recommend you attend everything because knowledge is invaluable. Knowledge is everything when it comes to this. Let me see. What else do we have? Oh, sorry, Lorna. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I got the code to request a meeting with our expert business consultant. We will. And um, okay. Yeah. So, Brian, thank you. Um, Brian just sent the link to tomorrow's webinar okay. that you will be leading. Um, so, you have that there. Awesome. What you have on the screen now is uh, if if you want to register with the center to request one-on-one -on -one consulting, you can scan this QR code and uh, register with the center. I recommend you all do that. Remember, there's going to be no cost ever for this, okay? And um, that gives you access to the center and then you will be assigned a, a, a consultant based on your needs. And uh, that way you can, you know, request them. Please keep in mind that these are for businesses, you know, for us. For our center, you, your business needs to be located either in Miami-Dade County or Monroe County. If you have questions about other uh, uh, locations for your business, and you know, uh, please ask us, and we'll direct you to the right uh, center to help you, which can give you the same, you know, assistance. It's just, you know, we're, 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 it is by area. So please um, scan that, the that, that QR code so you can sign up for consulting. Also, the link for uh, re registering for consulting is in the chat, guys. Awesome. Okay, thank you everybody and have a pleasant day and week. All right, everybody. I'm, thank you for your time. I'm, I guess not, we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you everybody for your time. Uh, please uh, attend the rest of our, uh, and I'll, I'll try to uh, join the rest of the, of the sessions and like just get a little better so I can speak a little better. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure meeting you. I hope to meet you in consulting one day. You did great, Thanks. sir. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Luis. Thanks for the save again. Done, Lauren?